You just fire away. I'll be able to answer the questions. Great. And um, I guess look at me, not the camera. I guess. Yeah, because that light's killing me right now. Yeah. All right. Um, so I want to see if I'm sitting down here and you're looking at me. Is that all right? Yeah, I don't know if I'm too low. But uh, just kind of like look at this thing right here. Yeah, right there? Yeah, that looks good. Okay. All right. Um, or a little bit lower, a little bit lower. Yeah, try to keep that position. That's okay. Great. Um, can you tell me about the men's lacrosse event <laughs> that's going to be happening tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow's our annual Lax for Leukemia. This is the third year of this event. Uh, I think the date we've raised in the first two years almost $30,000 for the local Leukemia Society. It's in honor of Alex Knees, one of our uh, players uh, who was struck with leukemia uh, three years ago, but has made his way back into the lineup, and we're excited he's back with us. Uh, but in his honor, we started this uh, three seasons ago, and this will be the third one. We've been selling t-shirts on campus all week. Uh, we got a silent auction on the day of the game, and uh, we also have the Le uh, Leukemia Society there for uh, educational purposes on the game at the game on Saturday. Wow, sounds very interesting. Um, could you tell me more about the events that will be going on, like details of the silent auction? Um, well, the silent auction uh, is headed up by uh, Alex's mom, Mo Neves, and uh, she's orchestrated uh, through some local vendors and people over on her side of the bridge, um, and a lot of parents that have uh, rallied around the event to put together different kinds of baskets and different types of donations, uh, anywhere from uh, you know two rounds at Congressional Golf Course, you know, which is one of the greatest places to play in the United States, to uh, a week uh, in a condo in Orlando, to just miscellaneous golf things and other uh, bread baskets full of goodies um, that she's put together for the silent auction. I think she has 25. Uh, and all at this point, um, it's a chance to get some great uh, things, uh, donate to a great cause, you know, at the same time on Saturday, uh, which will be right at the stadium. Great, sounds good. Um, and the t-shirts, um, what did they, um, what did they, what do they have printed on them? What did, um, these t-shirts, they're, they're orange uh, they, on them. They have white, white, they have orange writing on them, they're white t-shirts, and they have a, you know, a little tribute to lacrosse and uh, Lex for Leukemia. Uh, and a tribute to Alex. Um, and they've been sold uh, on campus through the week and in the cafeterias through uh, lunch and dinner. Um, we're also selling some t-shirts at a local uh, high school and a club lacrosse thing down in Berlin on Sunday. Um, but right now we're pretty close. We're on our last batch uh, and we're going to be close to almost selling a thousand t-shirts. Wow. And um, I guess the funds that are being raised, um, uh, they're being donated to the leukemia research on uh, many types yeah, of... Yeah, the Leukemia Society, and they'll use it for, uh, you know, research and other types of things to hopefully to find, a, you know, uh, a remedy uh, and a solution to, to this disease and in, uh, in, in Alex's behalf. Great, great. And um, Alex will be playing at the game? Um, Alex will be suiting up on Sunday. Uh, he's a midfielder for us. Uh, he's a sophomore eligibility, um, and he, he's back at, uh, at full strength. Um, uh, anything else is going to make this game tomorrow unique or than Well, there's a lot of other things happening tomorrow, too, besides this being lax for leukemia. Uh, number one, it's senior day. It's our last regularly scheduled regular season home game uh, at 11 o'clock in the morning in front of Sam and the Seagull in front of a Henson Science Hall. Um, the seniors will get their portraits with their parents that we put together, um, and then they'll be honored right before the game. Um, them, the seniors and their parents. Uh, it's also a huge conference game as we move forward and then trying to capture the conference championship that leads to an NCAA bid. This is a big game uh, against a team who's been ranked for the first time, Mary Washington, at 16th in the country. So it's a battle. There's a lot, a lot on the line tomorrow. A lot happening, um, you know. And we're excited and looking forward to to tomorrow's events. Oh, definitely. I'm looking forward to it myself. Um, is there anything else you could share with me regarding uh, Alex, the fundraising, the game itself tomorrow, or everything that's going to be basically happening tomorrow? Anything that I... Well, I guess there's a unique story about Alex. You know, his number is number six. And uh, number six, tr if you know anything about Seagull uh, aura or tradition in lacrosse, six has been worn by some of the greatest players to ever play here. Um, 
starting back with uh, Jake Berge, who was a first-team All-American in, in the mid-'90s, and then his brother, who was after him, was a first-team All-American. And, um, you know, in the number six, it was in honor of their dad, um, Bill Berge, because he wore number 66 and was an all-pro linebacker for the Philadelphia Eagles. And that's how they, the boys wanted to wear number six. Um, and then after those two wore it, there was another Philadelphia kid named Jeff Vigas, uh, who was a great player here. He was a four-year starter on defense, and he was a three-time first-team All-American. And then after Jeff uh, graduated, number six was then handed down to Kyler Berkman, my son, who indeed took it to a whole other level in that he was a three-time first-team All-American, and he's the only player in the history of our program to ever be named a three-time National Midfielder of the Year, and he was also a National Player of the Year. And Alex came in after Kyler graduated, and usually six goes to the next spot, aspiring great player here. And, you know, when Alex was coming from his club team, Mad Lax, in Northern Virginia, we thought that he was going to be that next great, great All-American player because he had all the skills and he had all the, the talent. Um, had a great freshman year, played on the second midfield line. You could see him getting better each and every day. Um, you know, and he had a little leg injury swelled up a little bit and you know thought it was just a little groin you know a little pull on his his leg or something and was swollen up for a number of days and finally went to the hospital and you know got some blood work done and next thing you know boom you got leukemia you know you just can't believe it you know you thought you just got injured out in fall ball you know and from there he's been through a long long battle um one that uh you know i can't even imagine you know some of the things that he has been through um, to the point, you know, I remember one time going to see him in the hospital and his body wasn't digesting fluid and, you know, I think he weighed 220 pounds and he was blowing up and uh, I saw him at that time and, you know, I, I wondered when I left the hospital that day if I'd ever see him again and he was in such bad shape and then, then his body, they got the body, fluid out of his body and the next thing you know he weighed 130 pounds, you know. Uh, just crazy things because of the treatments and the you know, chemo and all that other stuff. Um, but he's endured it all. You know, he's got his weight back up uh, to 170. His strength test uh, that he took this year were better than he was when he was at full strength before, so he's regained his strength. Um, his skills are getting better each day. He's still a step slow from where he was before, but he's pretty close right now, and he's continuing to improve and work hard. It's, it's just a real success story, and he's in remission right now. And you know, knock on wood, hopefully, you know, he'll continue to improve and and uh, keep getting better and better each and every day. Okay. See, I, yeah. Uh, wow. Uh, so Alex is he's still in recovery? So he's he's playing. He's still recovering. He's recovered as far as right now. He's in remission. You know, okay. he's had several tests and he's passed those big hurdles, which is I guess obviously very difficult when you have any type of cancer that you know the next time up you get a treatment and you find out that you're in remission and there's no cells that you know that's a, the most exciting thing that a person could ever hear um, so I mean he's at that stage and I mean he's out there battling every day for two hours in practice and you know working in the weight room and you know trying to find his niche back you know with the team and recover to where he was before the injury wow. and, uh, definitely wish him all the best of luck and uh, success that um, so seems like I think we covered pretty much everything. Um, I don't want to uh, get too well. Um, I think I think I probably should do it. Okay. Thank you for your time. Oh, if I could just um, get some B-roll footage before yeah, you can leave. Shoot just the, like you can shoot the rings, whatever you want to do. All right, buddy. Yeah, zoom in. All right, there you go. Thank you so much.